Okay, so let's continue. Okay. So this is our uh, room in here, and uh, I think uh, we should be thankful for the UC Merced. They can spare us uh, a drone lab like this, on, not on campus, but in castle. So uh, by the end of this lecture, uh, in about 11.20, so 11.20, 11, I'll do the, uh, you do alarm in here, 11.20? I'm going to lead you to uh, uh, see uh, our lab, okay? Um, so, lab time is Tuesday, Thursday, 2.30 to 5.50, uh, 5.30. One of you sent me an email saying that you need to leave earlier, you have class after that? You. So you have such a late lecture on campus? Well, I got out of that class. Though. Sorry? I dropped out of that other class. Oh, you don't have to. I already said OK. <laughs> ah, I see you. See, I remember every email you sent me. If you don't get my response, what you should do? Send again. OK? <laughs> Until you get an answer from me. Keep sending. So. That's the best strategy you should do. Uh, usually I will respond within 24 hours latency, okay? Usually. So if you don't get me, so tomorrow, 2.30, I will be here to make sure our lab is going well. And what you need to do is basically what? Learn how to group yourself. You need to start to talk. So three people in a team, okay? So we have eight teams, okay? Maybe you have only seven because of 22, okay? Three times seven is 21. And they, so one team could be four, okay? One team could be, so we have seven teams, okay? Three, eight, yeah. One team will be four people but don't do so many fourth person team, okay? Only one allowed, okay? Others will be three person team. Then, for the final project, you will have six person team, okay? And the six person team will form as a startup. So everybody will play a role like CEO, CXO, uh, you can define, okay? So we'll coach you how to go through that process, okay? We have done last, last time. It's pretty su successful, we had eight. We had eight companies, startup ideas. And we'll give you the package, so you can use that one to try out, and put some footage for your pitch slides. So, you know, I, I expect this to be exciting. So start to think about now. In the end, suppose you are very, uh, knowledgeable a drone scientist, drone engineer, okay? Scientist. Uh, so you are starting, you have a brilliant idea, you create some nice service. So what are you gonna do with it, okay? So last time there was a team, so to deliver marijuana, a uh, recreational, okay? <laughs> that idea is not so bad. <laughs> but I, I, it's considered as legal though, so. But, uh, so use your wild uh, imagination how to make money by flying the drones, not just for fun, but also for money. Create value-added services to the good of the community, okay? So that's, uh, we'll explain to the later stage of that, but get sense of that, okay? Uh, office hours, uh, my office hour, by the way, my office is, is, is here. Okay, push this one and this on your right side. So I have a hotel office here. Did I put a hotel? Yes, uh, this, do you know this, what does this mean? Hotel, meaning you go there and you use it. If you are not there and other people can use it, but in principle, they are not going to 
compete with, uh, with me on the space here. So that's why we have space. So it, it is not like this setting is, is after long time preparation, okay? So you should feel thankful, not just to me, but to the university willing to make this room this setting, okay? Okay, I'm glad you didn't get lost. You are all here. And uh, so TA, my office hour basically, I will stay here until the end of the day. Okay? So then you can choose to stay here and you can check me on other questions. So it's a three hours long commitment. Okay? So you, you will be here. And I'm going to move my office to this room here. So after maybe two weeks later, I'll move my office here so it's much easier. And the TA office is that corner. Okay, TA's boss office is there. So TA office hour will be also in the Monday afternoon and uh, Wednesday afternoon. So f across the week, he only needs to come in the afternoon and. Uh, and do his own stuff in the morning. So it's also three hours, and uh, also my PhD student Guo Xiang will also be ready for you. Okay. Okay, the free textbook. So I I see whether I can click this one. No. Uh, I cannot click. Oh, I can. So if I click, I'll, I'll get a directory of this one. I suggest you download a copy because I made it in an in organized way. You can chapter by chapter. So get an exposure for all the knowledge there. So likewise, I suggest you check. Uh, this is uh, what I call uh, the files, lecture notes in here. Oh, no. This is still a uh, 2000, no, this is getting to 2016 fall somehow. So we should go to here. This is 2007-8-7-6 is our new semester. So um, the textbook is here. It's here, okay? It's here. And also I put this one, I suggest you download a local copy. So this is called a Handbook of IAM and Aircraft Systems. So everything linked to the drones, you can find things to read without searching the internet. This handbook has authoritative materials related to the topics you want to take a look. Click the index, you will be able to see. So all the topics in here, okay? Download it to a local copy, it's very easy to explore, okay? Uh, also, I just put my week one, and you can see there are some files. My job is to maintain the folder with minimum possible files. <laughs> okay, it's easy to pull all the materials to you, but I'll maintain that one minimum. So, PGNE drone Livermore. Oh, you don't see this. Okay, that's interesting. I'm I'm talking about this. So this, like this one, this is the textbook, the week one here. So week one here, you can see the Livermore one is here, right? You click that one, you see all the link to our regarding the methane sniffing drone work, okay? And I have a naming method regarding putting the You can see I have a naming method. So summer six weeks, US course week zero one, A1, A2, B1, B2, okay? So these are for Monday, A is for Monday, B is for Wednesday, okay? And one is for part one and part two. Each lecture will have two parts. Because three hours is just too long, right? I break into two. And today is probably we have part three, like uh, Brandon Stark will give us uh, the talk. Okay. 
and uh, yeah, of course I have more things in here than you have in your uh, in the folder. So, so that's why again I'll I'll try to put minimum possible files in the folder, and everything in the folder I'll expect you will open it and quickly browse it and hopefully you will get interested and in read it but I cannot check okay uh, we'll use midterm and final exam to check all right okay so I'll get you flavor of last uh, time we did the uh, homework I uh, did a uh, uh, did um, midterm and final exam I'm being open to you so there you have a, a flavor of what I expect you to learn, okay? So let's continue here. So textbook is free. The course goal, we should uh, go through a little bit. So I think overall understanding is important because everybody believes that in this internet age you can have knowledge about something okay so having a knowledge about something oh yeah you heard about it that's not enough you still need to understand it and this world is becoming important so your knowledge about something should not have holes okay gaps you should have overall understanding so this course is to establish that understanding without holes or of years holds. So like history types, civilian small UAV applications, a firm understanding of operational safety rules and compliance requirements and basic elements, okay? Uh, aerodynamics, flight dynamics, uh, guidance, navigation and controls, a payload and the payload enabled con ops concept of operations how many of you never heard of a con ops you never heard of so it's a military military war so you can google i don't think there's a wikipedia entry for con ops okay so it's a concept of operation con ops uh, basic knowledge of u.s mission planning and gcs operation okay gcs operation so basic knowledge of US UTM and uh, man traffic uh, management. So because the airspace is getting denser, more and more drones flying in there, what the rules will be? It's not so clear yet. And it will be more and more clear in the coming days. So you should be prepared to understand this is emerging and uh, more and more important. It's just like, you, have w you probably you watched something in the movie, futuristic movie, that you have drones at different heights, you know, uh, the flying, the, the sky is so busy, you know. That day will come, okay? That day will come. But what is the rule? How to manage those traffic, okay? So beyond the visual line of sight, and you fly and you don't see it, you don't know where it is, I'll make sure it's safe. And those requirements, we should understand that. Basic knowledge, okay? I say basic knowledge is you should know that, okay? And uh, use cases, strong entrepreneurial process, meaning the last project will measure you about drone entrepreneurship, okay? I'll invite some good people here to give you to share with you about entrepreneurship okay so that's uh, the course go uh, then learning outcome in terms of learning we need to say how can I tell I learn okay so those are the things you need to compare so have you uh, been able to understand typical civilian low cost and menace error systems operate typical civilian low cost and military systems and stand to comply the regulation in a small UAS uh, operation, okay? 
uh, or how you can integrate mission sensors in a typical civilian low-cost UAV system. So you want to attach a camera with the drone and what other things you should observe, what are the general steps, procedures, things to observe, okay? And uh, <laughs> this is funny, I should share with you. Listen carefully. So, um, to be able to get ready, or to be able or to be ready, or to be able to be ready, <laughs> there's a difference, right? So, at least you have the confidence to proceed and register for uh, the drone, okay? Uh, pilot uh, exam. So, I'm working on a thing that I uh, should not rely on this. So uh, register for the exam is $150 a piece. So you try, but so far I only heard two person failed for the first time. So just imagine that uh, it's relatively easy if you keep going in, in the end of this course, then you should be able to get ready to create this related engine. Uh, get ready to apply for this uh, remote pilot certificate with a small U.S. rating. Get this drone pilot, uh, drone pilot uh, license card. So I'm going to ask Bo tomorrow to show you his card. He applied a card. He passed the exam, get the card. It's just like a driver's license. But that card number put into your resume, say, oh, you got this. That will enhance your resume and make you stand out in the job market if the company has some drone related business. I imagine that, that you don't have to be a real drone company. You can have a regular company like a, a real estate design firm, you know, a developer, construction, uh, you name it. It's just like so many um, possibilities. I'll, I'll lead you through those lists about application cases next time. So um, just many. Then each of you, without this license, is not very good. But you put it, say, oh, I took a drone course, the regular university course for credits. And they show them our syllabus, uh, like learning outcomes. Okay? That will also make a difference. <laughs> okay. So that's the purpose. Like I want to make myself very tired and uh, to do this summer course for you. So um, this is a historic, okay, historic. I know many students do not have the room in a normal semester to put this course in due to the conflict of schedule. The summer probably is a good idea, okay? Um, let's move forward, make this summer offering successful. Again, all I, knew, I want you to do is to put in efforts. You say, oh, I only took two hours a week. No, you cannot do that. You have to do like around 20, around 20. Uh, minus the class time, minus lab time, you, you still need around eight to 10 hours a week. If you don't spend that level of amount of uh, effort, then uh, you uh, check these outcomes, you feel very blurry, you don't have a good idea. In this case, uh, it's a good tradition. <laughs> Students will blame professor. So the professor didn't do a good job. Sometimes it's true, but sometimes it's because you didn't put in efforts. Okay? Put in enough efforts. So all I want you to commit is the time, efforts. If you put this amount of efforts, you will be there. You will meet my expectation. I don't mind to give you everybody an A, OK, if you get it. <laughs> I don't mind. So it's recorded, OK? <laughs> I don't mind. I will never use a Gaussian distribution to pull you down. No, no, no. no there's no sense. We measure your learning by these outcomes. I will be able to sense whether you get it or not by midterm and at the final. Okay.
So grading, 30% of the labs, so one third of the thing is lab. Attendance is 10% by using the quiz. Uh, my quiz grading policy is everybody get a 100 if you come. If you didn't come, it's zero. Only two grades. But you still need to do it. I'll keep the record. When I give you the grade, if you are at the some boundary, I'll start to check your uh, uh, quiz. The quiz, every time I collect it, I'll make a, a scan and keep a copy. Okay? Then I return back to you. You keep it. Quizzes are good reminders about what you have learned in the classroom. Okay? So I'll do that. So with that, we finished the first module. So we have uh, not so many times left, but I still wish you are going to go through the slides posted online. So we have 29 slides in here about history. Okay. Uh, any questions? I'm going to get questions from you this point. Uh, somebody complained that the stool is not comfortable for <laughs> you. Okay. I think I cannot help too much. But I can spare you with my chair here. Oh, this is good. Oh, good? Yeah. Um, you know, that's different. That reminds you this is different, of course. This is lab intensive entrepreneurship emphasized, okay? And hands-on, you know, lab experience as well. Do indoor-outdoor flights, we'll do that. And, uh, so well, let's keep uh, going a little bit faster. So we're talking about, uh, so textbook, I think Kimon's book chapter on U.S. history was really good. Uh, very colorful, uh, very nice photos, and explained very logically. So um, I hope you open that. So maybe I show you. So this this file. U.S. history pages from Kimo. So, and this is this is the textbook of this one. So, can you pass around? Uh, so, the back cover to describe the textbook, and uh, the chapter three is regarding the uh, the drone history and the classification, and so on and so forth. So this one. So we probably don't have time to do a discussion about uh, the drone age. Okay. So maybe go back and think about what we uh, heard today and. Uh, Next time in the lecture, we have a group discussion about uh, your uh, opinions about drone age, okay? And introduce yourself and uh, answer the question is why you are in this classroom? Why you are in this class, okay? So get ready. Motivate you to think about what's in the final project as well. So, read the homework assignment number one, what I wanted from you. And also you have some assignments for YouTube watching, uh, so you need to watch it. So, drone age, I told you that, so what we talked about, this is uh, a lot of things. Uh, so, it, so some keywords what we heard, so we are not going to repeat too much in here. So one thing I hope you pay attention that our main system is actually more uh, safer. 
okay, safer. Do you know that um, previously you heard about the uh, Korean, uh, South Korean uh, airline in uh, San Francisco airport almost uh, had an accident when they land? Okay. It was in the news everywhere last time. It's big news. You, you heard about it? Yeah. How many of you heard about it? That is exactly the case of the, uh, of the justification saying that those are pilot's error. The pilot's error. So when they land, they are supposed to have automatic landing procedures. But the guy who took over was not well trained. So the landing actually was a manual landing. and didn't land well. It's almost exploded. It's very dangerous. The people on the, on the airplane will die, you know. So, unmanned system is actually um, safer, okay? So, privacy, you don't feel this is a problem, but uh, four years ago, this is a big deal. And people say, oh, when I take a shower, and the drone will come to see me through the war. <laughs> Well, it's just ridiculous. So. But in principle, and this is doable, you do x-ray, you know, or terahertz scanning. But who cares? But when you look at your uh, uh, laptop, you have the potential um, leak of your privacy as well. So are you going to do this all the time? You know, we can be solved, these things. So uh, uh, just flash you a few facts that uh, six years ago, Actually, uh, in 2010, we wrote this paper to document the fact that uh, the autonomous flying under $500 is possible today, yes. And uh, under $100 is all possible as well. So I have a drone in here. So uh, this is a drone in here. So, but this is a parrot for, for toy, OK? We're not going to play this. This is too, too, it's too simple. Maybe pass it around as well. Uh, so, so at that time, this is called, uh, uh, in 2012, they provided this, what they called Reauthorization Act of FAA. So open the national airspace to allow commercial use of drones, okay? Commercial use of drones. So that's a good news. But what is our main aero systems? Okay? So you, you have to have a navigation electronics there to, to be called as a, a main aero systems. Okay? But if you have a balloon, you call this a drone? Probably it's not. So you, you have paper plane, you do that. There's no navigation electronics. So that's why there's a hobbyist RC aircraft you, you, RC aircraft, if there is no navigation electronics in there, it's not considered as a drone, okay? So the defining thing is the navigation electronics. All right? So, so history is actually interesting and uh, heavier, heavier than air uh, powered flight uh, is something called uh, is 1896 by the Sam Langley. I think the Langley probably you heard this name. NASA has a Langley Center, the Maryland. So <laughs> Langley, Langley, and then there are some other things. So surprisingly. The initial purpose of using unmanned aero systems, the UAVs, are for what? Targets. So you fly there, then we shoot you, you know, for training. So if those drones are targets, okay? Targets. So in mass production UAV is what they call catering bug. We have photos later on, okay? Uh, you know. And so there are longer description of the history in the chapter I showed you, the history. 
So let's take a look of this uh, visual arts here. So this is called target drones. They fly this drone without pilot in the cockpit being able to fly and to be destroyed by other aircrafts. So, so that's called the target drones. Okay. It's controlled by the radio and uh, the catering bug. They can carry some uh, torpedo and just hit. So at that time, there isn't a navigation electronics there, so we don't call it a uh, drone, okay? Uh, then uh, you have some other uh, different types of, uh, so this is a small one, uh, small aircraft on back of the bigger one. <laughs> and uh, this is not considered as a UAV because it didn't carry its own navigation electronics, okay? And uh, so there are all these other UAVs as different types, so combat UAVs. So we don't put an, uh, the gun on the, on, the, on the drone, okay? This is automatically illegal, okay? Don't do that, okay? <coughs> so when we are on the civilian side of the drone, okay? We don't touch defense, military related, or and this is also very expensive. I think each of these are very expensive. So we focus on low cost, affordable, cheaper drones. Okay. I think you heard about this thing, Global Hawk, a Dark Star Predator. You heard about the Predator, right? So. So this is a rough size, uh, the Boeing 737 is full size. But Global Hawk, you can see the wind spine is this big, okay? And also Predator is smaller, okay? But the wind spine is uh, still very, it's a 48 feet. Divide by three is, uh, seven, is 15 meters, 15 meters, okay? It's uh, quite big. And uh, this one is already uploaded on your folder. Uh, if you buy, probably you need to spend thousand dollars buy a copy. And we do have a copy in the library, hard copy. And uh, don't try to get one. We borrowed it in our lab, so we placed there. Uh, uh, inside this handbook, we have two chapters from our lab. Okay, so and we have some uh, bragging rights. I don't have time to go through all of them, but uh, one of the things is uh, something I feel interesting called SJR, Senate Joint Resolution, is to have uh, something to demand, send to the President of the United States, ask him to read, okay? The read, at that time, is basic message is here saying that in the University of, uh, in the state of California, we have a drought condition or any drone related work okay linked to water and uh, environment okay so uh, we hope the president will tell FAA don't bother us uh, let us just do our job because we know what we are doing for example we have knowledge base in here Mesa lab in here University of California so you see what I mean so that's called a resolution, okay? Uh, so ask the president. So we have some other uh, bragging rights. Uh, I probably don't have to go through with you. Oh, I received the negative uh, comments from my uh, Mechatronics uh, class saying that Dr. Chang always spend time to tell stories about himself. I'll minimize that, so I skip this. Um, then we have uh, high impact contributions to the menus, encyclopedias, handbooks, and so on and so forth. So the slides are in the, in the, in the, in the folder. You can check it out. Um, and I'm trying to build a synergy. It's not just ourselves good at drones. I will hope with Berkeley, Santa Cruz, Merced, and San Diego, and Davis, 
to build drones, platforms, operational certification, and stuff like that. Precision agriculture, including crop health and spraying, irrigation, and the water drones. We can try to do fire detection drones, soil sampling drones, dust and air quality, methane, so and so on and so forth. Okay? So this is still an ongoing effort. It's called CIDRs. Hopefully we'll attract more and more attention and establish this center. And uh, from education part, how many of you, what's, what's STEM? Nice. So drones for STEM is a movement on a Twitter a hashtag. So I contributed a few things there. So uh, a lot of things happening here. And having this site, teaching lab, and having uh, uh, something going on uh, related to education is also my uh, part of the effort. You can check for details. And there are some interesting recorded history regarding UAS. Go and watch it, okay? And uh, my team has some rich history about winning the AUVSI uh, UAV competition. So 2018, we won the second place, okay? 2009, we won the first place. Uh, but who are the others? The MIT, Cornell, Santa Cruz, in uh, North Carolina State. Okay, we were the number one. Okay, and then we got our number one again uh, in 2011. I don't think anybody won this competition twice. Okay, so but again, we uh, among the big teams, we beat the, the uh, Austin and Santa Cruz, uh, San San Diego, and we also had two teams here us actually. So my past activities are documented in here. So let's take a break. And while Brandon is arriving, and what we are going to do during the break is I'll do a guided tour for you. Uh, you follow me. Uh, we are going to see uh, the rest of the three things. So in the castle, usually you will be able to see four things. The first thing is the first thing is the drone teaching lab. This one. With the indoor flight net. Okay. The second thing I'm gonna show you is outdoor flight net. Okay, we have a hangar there. I'm gonna show you we're going to fly inside that net outside. Why we need to do outside? Because the inside of the GPS will not work. Okay, we have to get out and uh, to fly there inside a the net. Why we need a net? Because we, have, we are within five miles of radius of this castle commercial air, uh, air, airport. So we need to follow that. Cannot fly freely. So th this is the second thing to see. First thing, teaching lab. Second thing, outdoor hangar and uh, netted area. The third thing is to see the mesa lab, the drone research lab. Okay, research to get a feeling about what a research lab look like and uh, how the PhD students are put into the bunker and working at the pit. Um, so the fourth fourth thing to see is uh, AI double A. Okay, a club. You see the design, build, and the fly. Uh, the team there. So follow me, and you can ask questions during the. Uh, during the tour, okay? Come over and uh, wait. We can go from here. <laughs>